Okay, welcome back everybody. This is part two of building a PC with a total budget is equivalent to the price of an annual membership to PlayStation Plus premium here in Canada, which is 190 plus tax, which comes up to $220. So all the parts you're looking for were acquired on Marketplace secondhand for a total cost of around $220, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> nice. Now I'm gonna chime in and out during the build because to be honest, when I'm building a PC, I just like to put some music on and kind of disconnect and do the build. Uh, but basically, we have a B450F Gaming 2 motherboard from Asus. We have 32 gigs of LPX Vengeance RAM from Corsair 3200 megabits 2x16 gig kit. We have a Ryzen 5 2600X. We have a Kingston 480 gig SSD, a knockoff Chinese brand light on brand power supply that came from a Lenovo Legion pre-built 500 watts, a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti that came from that same Lenovo pre-built uh, single fan, which is going to be hilarious in this case. The case is a massive Inwin 925 tank, Tiger tank of a case that we have over here. It is massive. It's going to be fun to build in. It has so much room that I don't see this build having any unforeseen issues but every time i say that there's always something small that goes wrong and for the cooler because we had a limited budget we will be sticking with the stock in the wraith cooler that came with the 2600x so the total cost that we paid obviously this is not retail pricing all on marketplace haggling free parts here and there total cost that was paid was 245 dollars which is more than the 220 budget but that was for two processors so we still have a ryzen 5 1400 to sell so if we sell that for let's say 25 bucks, then we bring our budget to exactly $220. So those are the parts. I'm gonna jump into the build. And once it's done, we'll come back. We'll do some benchmarks. We'll see how this PC, what performance we get in 2024 with some modern games, some older games, some esports games. I'm not expecting it to have that much trouble for those, but we'll come back and do some benchmarks and tests. And guys, if you are enjoying this type of content, please make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get to it. I'm excited. So it's been about, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes since I started this. It's, I think like two songs, so whatever, eight minutes. And so far we are fine. By the way, look at this motherboard. We still have the sticker here, the plastic peel on the IO. It's crazy, huh? These parts I got plastic peel on the IO, plastic still on the tempered glass case. Like, uh, I think I looked out with some of these, uh, <laughs> these parts. So we got the CPU in, we got the cooler. Yes, I put thermal paste. Yes, I made sure that there was no Nothing stuck at the bottom of the cooler plastic peel or anything. We got the dual channel RAM. Uh, so RAM, cooler, CPU is in the motherboard. Uh, so to be honest, I mean, um, I'm ready to go in the case. This this case, like look at even the, the, the side panel, right? The tempered glass. It's not just like a piece of glass. Like in my Fantex and my P500A, you got to be like a bit delicate. And yes, I'm still delicate because it's tempered glass. But like, like, look at this. Because you have kind of like the plastic at the edges over here, it just feels so much more rugged and instead of those little like thumb screws or something holding it like look at these look at the size of these Obviously, we can see we have light at the motherboard, which is good. Uh, plugged in the fans. This case was super easy to build in. The only thing I find really annoying with this case is because of the back panel here, the way it is, you don't have easy access to the I.O. ports on the back of the motherboard. So you kind of have to like bend in there to put everything in or remove the back panel every time you want to put something in, which I guess looks cleaner once everything is plugged in. But until that point, I mean, yeah, you can't really... Uh, can't really do anything. I'm not going to cable manage anything yet and just want to make sure everything posts and works properly. Okay, fans are working, fans are spinning and they're lighting up. 
Okay, so obviously everybody's uh, worst nightmare when you're buying parts secondhand is the PC is not booting. It's been a couple of minutes and we've got no display. Everything is spinning. So that's that's the good thing. Uh, CPU status light is on as an error code right now. So we're going to have to troubleshoot and see what it is. So it could be a number of things. Um, obviously, the easiest ones to check are going to be, um, you know, I'm going to plug. make sure all the cables are plugged in for the CPU, the motherboard, make sure everything is seated properly. But aside from that, I guess the first thing we're going to check is the RAM. Uh, that's usually 90% of the the times when I built PCs and I've had issues at, at first boot, it's always been a RAM issue. Either it's a few moments later. All right, guys, well, we figured out what it was. So one of the RAM sticks is in fact defective. We tried with both RAM sticks and in A1, B1, it didn't work. Both RAM sticks in A2, B2, it didn't work. One RAM stick in A1, it worked. One RAM stick in A2, it worked. So the culprit is in fact one of the 16 gigs of RAM is defective and the system is able to post with one stick of RAM at 16 gigs. So a bit unfortunate because we lose that dual channel, but the fact that we still have 16 gigs of RAM in this budget challenge system is still very good. Okay, so obviously the build is complete and everything works, which was a plus except for one stick of RAM, which was what we had to troubleshoot. So instead of running dual channel 32 gigs of RAM 2 by 16, we just have one stick of RAM at 16 gigs and they're at 3200. Actually, I was able to get it to 3400 megabytes hertz so it's unfortunate that we don't have dual channel but we still have 16 gigs of ram so that could be an easy upgrade in the future but let's test it out let's benchmark some games and see how it goes but this case is absolutely massive and i don't know if you guys could really tell from this but let me try to put it in perspective so this is an atx board this is obviously a single uh, fan gpu 1660 ti but the amount of room that i have in here still is incredible so this is a 27 inch monitor and as you can see majin Buu over here he's about as tall as the monitor and if I wanted to easily, no problem, you just, something's in the way there, but there you go, see? He fits inside the case. And by the way, guys, um, while I was building the PC, somebody reached out and I did, ended up, I did end up selling the Ryzen 5 1400 for $30. So that means we spent $245 minus the $30 for the Ryzen 5 1400 we have, which means our total spent for this PC was $215, $5 less than the cost of a PlayStation Plus Premium Edition for 12 months in Canada. This is a 1080p screen. We're hoping to get 1080p medium across the board at 60 FPS. I don't think Black Myth Wukong will get there, but maybe on low. Okay, now a lot of these games, I'm, I'm really not worried about the performance like Valorant here. Everything is on um, everything is on max, on high. So let's just jump into a game of Deathmatch and see, but I'm really not worried about a game like Valorant. Easily like 182, 183, 190 sometimes. So easy fps here yeah remember guys the purpose of this video wasn't to make a pc that's comparable to the playstation 5 or the playstation 5 pro that's not the point the budget that i was working with is just the cost of playstation plus not the cost of a playstation 5 console 300 fps no issues whatsoever for a 2600x and 1660 ti i don't think anybody thought there was going to be any issues in this game uh, still in the 70s yeah look easily we're playable yeah see still high 70s man we're, we're good i think we'll maintain an average of 70 no problem of 60. Now we could jump into some cyberpunk, a bit of a, still a newer game, I guess I would say, uh, but it should be pretty decently optimized at this point. So let's see how it handles. Uh, 1080p ray tracing is going to go, not Steam Deck. Oh, sorry, quick presets. We're going to go medium and graphical. I think we're good. Let's run the benchmark and we'll see what we get. Yeah, 1080p, you're going to have to probably drop down to low settings or drop down the resolution. Um, but yeah, the goal, like here we go. Average 59.1, minimum 44, maximum 74. Not bad. So let's just try one more time. And this time we're going to drop everything to uh, to low. Yeah, we can see the difference right away. Look, 87 FPS on low, still at 1080p. And look, we were able to get average of 70, maximum 90, low of 54. So much better than the medium settings. We're still in, in the high 70s, in the high 60s now. Extremely playable. Explosion, still at 60 FPS. Yeah, I think for the 1660 Ti, for Borderlands 3, stick to medium settings and you're going to have an extremely comfortable playable frame rate. Increasing super resolution can improve image clarity in certain situations but will reduce performance. Let's try it at 100 and see what we get. Because there is no FSR and there is no DLSS on this card. So by putting it to 100, we're still at 60 FPS. Okay, see now we're dropping a bit to 55, 54. And don't forget, we're not even on the lowest graphical settings, right? So I could always just drop the graphic settings a bit more to get better FPS. And again, medium settings, not low. Even at the 100% at super resolution, we still averaged 58 FPS. 2600X, 1660 Ti. 
six gigabytes of VRAM, and we still got that basically 60 FPS. Obviously, it's a 1660 Ti, 2600 X. It's able to handle games. We saw that from esports games to higher graphical games, it's able to run these games. And you could test other games too if you wanted to, like, I don't know, like an Alan Wake or Last of Us or whatever. You're probably gonna get the same stuff as around God of War settings especially Last of Us 1, probably around the same thing. So either way, I'm not too worried about the performance of this PC. We know it performs. Now, the point of this is saying that the price of this PC I paid was the cost of a PlayStation Plus premium annual subscription. So if we compare it to that, it's 100% better. There's no performance on a PlayStation Plus. You can't do anything with just PlayStation Plus. You need the PlayStation 5. So this was a fun little challenge. Now, Obviously, you can't go and copy this challenge exactly because based on where you are, your region, your negotiating skills, your patience, you might not end up with the same system. And I'm saying that please ignore the case. I know it's a very nice case. I know it's an expensive case and not everyone's going to be able to find that case for free. You might get like a sleeper case or an old case. It doesn't really matter. It's just a case. It doesn't really stop the performance of the PC. Really, to bring this PC to the next level, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take everything out of this because I'm not going to use this case. It's way too big for my usage. But I am going to transfer this into a different chassis and use it as like a home theater PC in the living room. So I'm going to add a second stick of RAM, change the power supply, and maybe add a hard drive or a bigger SSD just, just to make it easier than 480 gigs. But for $215, look what we were able to put together. For this price, this is not just a gaming system, right? This is a PC. So we could do our homework, we could do our taxes, we could just consume content on it. Well, I mean, you could do that with a PlayStation as well, but I mean, you could edit videos, you could, you could stream off of this, you could do a lot of things that you might not be able to do with a console, and you could just not have to pay for an annual subscription and play whatever games you want, even if it's just esports games, and you have an access now to a bigger library of games on PC. So I'm not saying to sell your console and stop paying for PlayStation Plus and go out and build this system. No, because at the end of the day, there is going to be games that are going to come out that might be optimized for the PS5 that this system might not be able to handle in the future. Who knows? It was just a fun little challenge that I wanted to give myself because I was going through those comments and the arguments of PC versus console versus PlayStation Plus came in and the cost of a PC. And I was like, I just wanted to show that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a computer if you're willing to go secondhand. Very happy with this challenge, very happy with the results, extremely happy with the results. To be honest, I did not think we were gonna end up with a system like this for the price that we set out. I was extremely worried that I was gonna end up with a very old system. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. This was something different. If you guys did enjoy these challenge types of videos, let me know, maybe give me another challenge down below and I would love to take on a new challenge. But if you guys did enjoy this, this is the second part, but if you guys did enjoy this video or the previous one, please make sure to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanted to see a bit more of a vlog style of how I obtained all these parts and some of the research I did, then go and watch part one. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys next time.